Hello, welcome to Con Corner. I'm Tina, and today I'm going to try cooking on our wood heat stove. Um, this stove, I, I showed you when I painted it uh, last winter. Uh, it's just basically a box, and, it, and wood goes inside of it. Um, the top doesn't get as hot as a wood cook stove would get, but um, I've read and I've been told that I can uh, cook on it like a slow cooker, using a a pot that's got a good tight lid on it and giving it plenty of time so that's what I'm going to do I tested yesterday with my little uh, my little kettle and uh, the the temperature I normally keep the top at around 200 degrees um, is uh, with the kettle open like that it'll get to about a hundred the water inside will get to about 135 if I put the lid on the kettle it goes up to about 165 if I crank the stove top up by opening the damper a little bit more so that the top of it registers about 225 to 250, the water in that kettle with the lid on will get up to 195 or 200 degrees, which is perfect for slow cooking. So there we go. Uh, let's get started. Okay, I've had my pan heating. It's probably too hot by now. I've got the carried away gab in it, y'all. So let's put some oil in it. I'm going to brown the meat on the stove top first, um, just to give us a nicer a nicer flavor. I could just put it directly into into hot water on the stove, but I I mean on the in the but uh, I'd rather I'd rather get it browned first. It just makes for a nicer nicer finished product instead of color. Get that, let that, uh, that popping stop real quick with the lid on. <laughs> let the lid get that to the me. Okay. Here. Let it brown a little bit more first before I stir it anymore. So not quite the way I'd like to have it. I'm having a, a hot spice cider today. I just do apple cider um, and, and I actually water mine down a little bit with some red hot candies in it. It's how I make mine. It's easy peasy. And then I can just store it. I mean, I can just keep the little pot on the stove and I can just warm it up when I want to cut through the day. Very nice for a cold day. Uh, keep the heat back up there. If it's not hot enough, when you put the meat in, the juices won't evaporate. They'll kind of come out into the oil and it won't brown well. So that's kind of... One of the things that I've learned that Paul taught me. There we go. And it does make it easier to to get the. And I'm not trying to cook the meat fully here. I'm just brown. I'm just getting getting a little color on it so that it'll uh, so that, like I said, it'll taste better. I've got. Water already heated over here on the other side. Let me get that back up to back up to uh, boiling because I want to pour it in at boiling after I put this on the stove. Okay, I think that's good enough. No, alrighty. Now then, I'm going to go put this on the stove. Now I'll be back. And there we have it. Um, I had a, I have a cast iron pot. It's, it's not a Dutch oven. It doesn't have legs on it. Otherwise, it's like a Dutch oven. But it doesn't. It's an old one that I bought, and it's a good one. But it's just been stored, and I went to wash it up to use, and it's got a funny odor in it. And so, instead of using it as is, I need to put it in my 
I need to put it in the oven at the self-cleaning cycle and get that old uh, seasoning off of it and, and season it new uh, before I try to use it to cook in. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now let me put my, let me get my water, my hot water here and pour it in. Okay. All right, now let me get my lid on. Could have brought all those things at once, huh? Okay. Now then, I'm going to let that cook for about an hour before I add the vegetables, and then I'll add the vegetables. Okay, go. Now I'm going to add my vegetables, not the potatoes, the other vegetables. I won't add the potatoes till the very end. So they might take they might take an hour to cook um, in this. Um, I might add them two hours before I plan to want to eat. We'll just have to we'll just have to see. But I'm adding onion, celery, and carrots right now. Okay. Put my lid back on. And then I'm not going to look at it, not even, I'm going to be, be firm with myself and I'm not going to lift that lid again for at least eight hours. <laughs> Alright, see y'all then. Did I say eight hours? Well, it's 3.30 now and I think it was about nine this morning when I put this on. So <laughs> after six hours, it's smelling really good and uh, I'm pretty... Uh, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put a can of corn in there because I don't like corn in mine. I'm going to put some peas in too, but not until later because um, I don't want the peas to overcook. So when it's done, I will add peas. Frozen ones and they can, they can cook. Oh yeah, it's looking really good. Let's see. Let me take out a piece of meat so I can... See how tender the how tender the beef has gotten in a carrot. Let's try a carrot too. I'll let those let me cool these just a second so I can taste them. Mm. Carrots completely done. Mmm. Beef is perfectly tender. Okay. Now it's time to add my potatoes. Oops. There we go. Okay. And some seasonings. Notice I haven't seasoned it yet, so now I'm going to season it. And yes, you can make really good beef stew without anything extra and artificial but honestly i like packaged beef stew seasoning and i like the way it tastes and it's easier than for me to try to use um you know gravy browning and all of those extra things uh, for a simple simple beef stew so that's what i'm adding as my seasoning so i'm not adding any extra salt or anything all right, and I put that back on, and we're going to kick it for another couple of hours, and we will see you again. Okay, after uh, eight hours of cook time, I've moved this to the stove to bring it to a boil, and I added some thickening, a little more thickening, just a little flour and water thickening, and I think it's about, about where I want it to be, and now I'm going to, and it's ready, it's ready to eat right now, so I'm going to turn the stove off, and I'm going to put some peas in it. Because I don't want to overcook the peas, and they'll they'll uh, cook just in the time it takes them to defrost in here, and that's plenty, I think. Uh, I always grew up with green beans in ours, but Paul likes uh, green peas in his, so that's that's what I put in there. And there you have it. Yeah, I could have added cooked cooked uh, barley, 
uh, which would have been very good uh, but I, I didn't uh, do that this time but I, that's always good I like with barley I cook up a batch of it and then just keep it in the refrigerator and use it over the course of a week or so that makes it easier because barley takes a long time to cook if I were going to add barley to this kind of stew I would put it in at the beginning when I'm cooking the uh, the meat and the carrots and all so that it's in there for hours and hours and hours all right now then let me uh, get this plated up and we'll see how it goes and there we have it delicious beef stew cooked on top of the wood heat stove I am so tickled this is uh this has been a fun project and it's neat when something turns out so well I serve it with buttered bread or with cornbread or uh, or crackers whatever you prefer thanks for watching I've enjoyed this a lot I uh, hope you guys have a, a wonderful uh, Christmas if I get this uploaded before Christmas <laughs> thanks for stopping by my kitchen <laughs>